to understand faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction we need to first understand the term magnetic flux now magnetic flux is the number of magnetic field lines crossing an area it is a measure of the amount of magnetic field through any surface okay now let us consider a surface say uh, let me just draw a surface over here say we have this closed surface and choose a part of the surface now say this is a surface and we take a small element of area da on this surface so i will just mark this as da and let us also draw the magnetic field lines because we want to find the flux through this surface so the field the magnetic field is crossing this area so these are the magnetic field lines and we denote this by the magnetic field with b now how do we find the <coughs> magnetic flux through this entire surface to find the magnetic flux through the area a we proceed as follows we first divide the surface a into small elements like this of area da so the first step is to divide the surface into small elements of area da the next step is for each such small element we find the magnetic flux so we need to calculate the flux for each such small element and then the third step is we would add up all these tiny contributions to find the total flux through the surface see uh, maybe at this point you need to review dot product of vectors in case you are not familiar with dot product of vectors so one thing that you need to look at is dot product of vectors and the other is the concept of an area as a vector okay i'll quickly look at these two uh, concepts of a dot product and area as a vector first of all if you recall what is a vector dot b vector a vector dot b vector is given by magnitude of a times magnitude of b multiplied by cos of the angle between them say the angle between these two vectors a and b is phi so you have the dot product a dot b is magnitude of a times magnitude of b times cos phi and the resultant product is a scalar quantity so that is the difference between a scalar product or a dot product and a vector product a cross product or a vector product gives you a vector quantity so this is a scalar product because this is a scalar quantity now an area is taken as a vector for instance over here we've marked this small area da now we have to take an outward drawn normal to this surface so an outward drawn normal to the surface will be the direction of this area vector so for instance if you have any closed surface you have a closed surface like this and say we take the surface of this area say you take a small element of area on the surface so an outward drawn normal over here would be the direction of this area vector so now we'll proceed further which was 
we had to find the magnetic flux and to do that we have divided this entire area this area over here into small elements da we are going to find the magnetic flux through each of them and then we will add them all up to find the total magnetic flux the magnetic flux through the small area element da can be written as d phi is equal to b da cos phi then the total flux to the entire surface will be given by phi is equal to integral d phi which means adding up all such contributions which gives us integral b d a cos phi and this is the same as integral b dot d a so the magnetic flux phi is equal to integral b dot d a see you could have understood the same thing in a slightly different way if you look at the b vector and say we resolve it into two components one along the surface and the other perpendicular to the surface see i choose this direction and the other is this direction now let's find the component of b vector in this direction and in this direction these are the two components we will now uh, label the two components this one as b perpendicular we'll call this b perpendicular and this is b parallel now to find the flux we need to multiply the area da which means d phi could have you could have also written it as da multiplied with b perpendicular because the parallel component is not crossing the surface at all which is da and if you notice b perpendicular is b cos phi so this is da times b cos phi which gives us the same result that d phi is b da cos phi or d phi the magnetic flux to the small element is b vector dot the area vector da integrating this we get the total magnetic flux is equal to integral b dot da this is the magnetic flux through the surface a okay now if you understood what we've discussed so far that the magnetic flux phi is given by b da cos theta or the let me just write this magnetic flux phi is equal to integral b dot da now in this case when we have the area placed as shown over here when the area is lying along the magnetic field what will the flux be through the surface first of all you need to see what is the angle between da and b 
is the angle between z uh, between d a and b is it 0 or is it 90 degrees. So, to find that you find the direction of the area first remember the area is a vector. So, we need to take the direction of the area and how do we find the direction of an area you need to consider the outward drawn normal. So, the direction of the area would be given by this vector over here this is the direction of the area vector. So, if this is the direction of the area vector and the magnetic field is in the direction shown then what is the angle between the magnetic field vector and the area vector this would be 90 degrees. So, in this case the flux will be phi is equal to integral b d a cos 90 which is 0. And you can also think of it like that that you have an area which is lying along the field. So, there are no field lines which are crossing the area they are going over the area, but they are not crossing the area they are not cutting the area and the flux is the number of field lines that cross an area or that cut an area. So, we come to the end of this session today thank you.